Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, folks, is uh, Billy on the hot seat? I know there's some desperate times down there that are talking about reclassifying a sophomore into the 2023 class. Uh, let's get into this. Now, I know a lot of you think I throw shade on Florida and all of that kind of stuff. Look, if they would just kind of let up for about five or 10 years, let us win about nine out of 10, which I think is going to happen, I would like them a lot better. You don't hear me wearing out Vanderbilt or Kentucky. Even South Carolina, who took a big leak in our Cheerios last year, even they've been okay the last decade or so. But the Gators have not. They've been very uncooperative and very difficult since the 1990s. And Steve Spurrier is standing right behind me, isn't he? I hate it when he does that. Well, anyway, am I enjoying or am I trolling a little bit on the Gators? Ask me the questions, Bridgekeeper. I'm not afraid. What? Is the capital of Assyria? I don't know that. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. But hey, look, again, we win nine out of the next ten games. I'm going to leave Florida alone for a good long time. But until that time, they are my Newman. Hello, Newman. Hello, Jerry. <laughs> Absolutely. They, will, they are my Newman. <laughs> now, first thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about this hot seat situation. I personally think Billy Napier is on the hot seat. Now, the only thing that keeps him off of that seat is the fact that he signed a $50 million contract. So before any of you start feeling bad for Billy Napier, he is going to make more money over the next several years, no matter what happens, whether he coaches poorly or coaches greatly. <laughs> he's going to make $50 million bucks plus. And even if they let him go, he's going to get 85% of that, of what's remaining. So he's going to be incredibly wealthy and his family forever. So don't shed too many tears over it, okay? But anyway, let's get into the fact that Vegas thinks they're going to win five and a half games. That's the over-under on them. If they win five and a half games, that's obviously a losing season because they went six and seven last year. That would be two losing seasons in a year under his tenure. Now, without the portal and all that, you could say it's a rebuild, whatever. Look, you know, Coach Heupel didn't have trouble turning the balls around in two years. They went 7-6, and six, then 11-2. and two. All right, how about LSU? They won the SEC West. So it can be done very quickly. And the Vols lost 30 players to the transfer portal because of Jeremy Pruitt and that old nightmare. And Florida's got the best recruiting footprint other than maybe Georgia and LSU. They're probably third. Well, maybe Alabama tied for third. But there's so many great players down in Florida, it's ridiculous. You can rebuild Florida very very quickly. It's, it's a good job. I hate saying that, too. But it's a very good job. So five and a half wins is not going to get it done. And I know the Florida Gator fan base, they are not tolerant. They're used to winning, and they're not going to suffer through three straight losing seasons, two of which would be under Billy Napier if this occurred. Now, he may win eight games next year, and things would definitely calm down. Seven wins, uh, he'll definitely get another year. If he goes losing season again, it's gonna, the hot seat is going to get super hot. They might not let him go because they'd still owe him $30 million bucks, but they might. I mean, they, they could be that crazy. But here's a YouTuber, and this one's Locked on Gators, and I'm also going to show you high top sports. These are two of the folks that, that I keep up with the Gators on because they cover it pretty darn well. And let's start out with uh, Locked on uh, Gators. And this guy, the one thing I do like about this is he's really being opinionated about this. And one of the things I like about YouTube is when people just tell how they feel. It's, uh, it's very entertaining. And this guy's kind of fed up with the whole uh, hot seat talk. Is the seat starting to get hot for Billy Napier in Gainesville? It's not. We're going to talk about it here on Lockdown Gators. Here's the thing. I don't want to talk about this. But I feel like given how much I've seen it from multiple national media outlets irresponsibly saying that Billy Napier is on the hot seat. I mean, that, that just that narrative being pushed, for me at least, is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It is the most moronic thought that I've ever heard. Now look, I know this guy's heard dumber things. There's no way this is the number one dumbest thing the man's ever heard. <laughs> anyway, let's let him continue. None of them, none of them come even close 
to how stupid you sound when you say Billy Napier's on the hot seat for 2023. You're an idiot. Like, if that's your thought, but there's no other way to put it. And I realize that this is coming off incredibly rude. Sometimes you deserve it. This is one of those times when you deserve it. Because let, let's start with expectations versus results. Billy Napier got hired pretty publicly with the, the thought of this is going to be a multi-year conversation. This is going to be a multi-year rebuild as to Billy Napier bringing the Florida Gators hopefully back to prominence. You know, if this were some small school, he'd probably be right. This is the Florida Gators. They're just not going to tolerate losing season after losing season. They're just not. So I'm going to have to disagree with him on that. And I don't have any problem with the bombastic uh, verbiage <laughs> at all. This is YouTube, man. It's okay with me. That's how he feels. Plus, look, he's talking to the Gators fans. You know, he's not really trying to rip on people. But, you know, if it comes across that way, that's okay, too. I mean, it's YouTube. Most of the teams that you lost to were somewhat acceptable. There was LSU. There was Georgia. Kentucky was not one that you should have lost. Uh, Vanderbilt was not one that you should have lost. Oregon State is fine, whatever. Yeah, the Vanderbilt loss, that was painful. You had the number four uh, pick in the in the draft at quarterback. He threw and ran for over 500 yards against us. Um, you shouldn't have lost to Vanderbilt. We beat Vanderbilt 59 to nothing, I think it was. So, anyway. But the, the, the thought was, again, from external pushing in, was Billy Napier is going to be lucky to win four or going to be lucky to win six games. He should win four or five. Can we also talk about how stupid you have to be to look at just Billy Napier go, Billy Napier had the fourth overall pick at quarterback and only won six games. You're a moron. I almost just threw an expletive at you. You're a moron if you say that. Okay. Oh, crap. That was kind of directly at me, wasn't it? <laughs> I said it. I have to admit it. I said it because it's true. He had the number four pick in the draft. The guy threw for and ran for over 500 yards against us. And y'all are got a losing season. And you're Florida Gators. I'll, I'll accept that. <laughs> Six games was kind of what people with brains were expecting. Six wins. It's kind of what people with brains were expecting. Okay. That's what you're expecting. Fast forward to this year. And Florida won six games last year, went six and seven, lost the bowl game in horrible, miserable fashion. Things like that can't happen in the future. But six wins was what happened. That was kind of the expectation here. Now we look at this year and it's Florida's winning four, maybe five games. Here's here's what I'm going to say to you. If you're thought if you're genuinely looking at this season and you go, Florida's going to win for maybe five games shut up like just stop speaking about football pretty much ever like we, we'd love it if you just never did it again that'd be awesome that'd be super dope here like when are those of you who who feel that way going to show up and pull your heads out of your you know what um look in the mirror and go Oh, I'm a dummy. If Billy Napier was fired without cause, 50% of his total remaining money would be paid within 30 days of his firing. So if he got fired, we'll say last day of the season, they'd have 30 days to pay him half of the I'm, I'm going to pull up the calculator right now to know they have to pay fifteen million nine hundred thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars within 30 days of billy napier get fired getting fired then you'd have to pay him 12.5 million of the remaining amount over the next four years all right now there's a reason not to fire somebody right there because as he says later in the video i'll save you that um You'd have to pay not only the eight million a year or so that he makes now, you're gonna to have to bring in another person. You're probably gonna to have to pay eight million. So they'd be paying sixteen million dollars a year for a coach at Florida, basically, one not to coach and one to coach. So that is a good reason not to fire somebody and to give them a third year. But 
If he does, now I don't think he's going to win five and a half games. I've got him at six. And whether or not he wins a bowl game or not, that would either keep him at six with a losing record, six and seven, or they'd go seven and six. And he, he'd skate by with that with a win in a bowl game. That's probably what's going to happen. The five and a half seems a little bit low, but the big problem is they don't have the quarterback situation squared away. They've got Graham Mertz, who's a you know mediocre, um, and probably I'm sure he's a swell guy, but he's a mediocre college football Division I uh, player. And then they've got another guy, Jack uh, Miller, I believe it is, who's kind of similar. He's a transfer guy. So they don't have a high-end quarterback right now, and I don't see one coming. So that's a problem in the SEC. It's not like they have a dominant defense or something along those lines. Does that mean that we're going to beat them at the Swamp? There's no guarantee of that. I can go ahead and tell you right now, when it comes to the Florida Gators, they're always going to be dangerous at the Swamp. The Swamp is a huge advantage to them, just like Neyland is to us. And they play their best football against Tennessee. For whatever reason, they've had our number for well over a decade, and it stinks, and I'm sick of it. And I do not expect an easy win down there. We'll have to earn every bit of it, and it's up to how Joe plays. I think it's the most important game of the year, without question. It's going to kind of set the tone and will also show us can Joe handle himself in a really toxic environment because they're going to be loaded for bear down there, I can promise you. So that would be the reason they wouldn't, but I don't have a lot of confidence in Billy Napier or the Florida Gators this year, and he is on the hot seat. He is. Granted, the money that's owed to him could save him just like Jimbo Fisher has saved him. But the hot seat is there regardless. And if he does survive, let's say he goes six and seven again and they keep him because of the money, the hot seat will be ri ridiculous the next year. It'll just be unfathomable. It will be, it will be as brutal as it can possibly be. He'd have to win probably – he might could win eight and get away with it that year, but probably nine would be the minimum because people will just be so fed up at that point because the Gators are used to winning, man. You know, they're a – look, I don't like them, but they're a quality uh, football team and have been for many years, and their their fans are – you know, they're not used to losing, and they're not going to tolerate it. So, anyway, I thought that would be kind of interesting. That's actually the most um, verbally aggressive. I've, I've seen that fella. Normally, he's pretty calm but I think he's pretty fed up with that talk. Doesn't mean it's going to stop. But anyway, I thought it'd be interesting to, to watch that. Now, the next fella I'm going to show you has to do with Austin Simmons. They are seriously considering reclassifying him. He's a sophomore in high school, will be a junior this year, uh, reclassifying him to the 2023 class, two years, pushing him two years ahead because of the quarterback situation at, uh, at Florida. It is kind of desperate for lack of a better word, and so they're considering that. Now, this guy happens to be highly intelligent, uh, does really well in school, and, and he could probably academically pull it off without too much trouble. But again, the kid's 15 years old. You're going to bring him in the SEC at 16, I guess? That's no bueno. But let's see what they have to say about it. Likelihood of 2025 quarterback Austin Simmons on the possibility of him reclassifying to 2023. Four-star rated quarterback right now would be a massive pickup if we could add that in addition to 2023. But there's a lot of pros and cons, a lot of things to weigh out here. He's got his last spring game coming up at his current high school, and then it's going to be decision time. Is he going to enroll in fall this coming for the University of Florida and play summer ball and play for 2023 for the Florida Gators? About him possibly reclassifying to 2023 went through the roof. And some of you be asking, well, how, how is this even possible? So, like, why is that even a thought that he could jump two classes well the kid's a certified genius <laughs> interview here he mentions where he talks about his gpa which is a 5.3 the kid has already taken college classes as a sophomore i think he once even spoke about in another interview about getting his master's his when he does finally go to college in two years so he would graduate college by the time he got to college where he could then get his master's while he was in college so academically this kid is ready to rock and roll not an issue whatsoever okay check one so far so good how is he on field child well from his eighth grade year to his sophomore year he has over 5,000 passing yards 42 touchdowns 13 interceptions with an average of 234 yards a game and he's won three national championships two of those being in baseball mind you and one being in football okay so until he passes the numbers on the field and off the field what are we even talking about why are we even worried about this why is this even a pro and cod dilemma well, it's 2025. The kid's 15 years old. He's 15 years old. Can't make this stuff up, folks. 
now is because he has his last spring game coming up at Moorhaven Junior High School that he is currently committed to play spring ball, which he has been playing spring ball with. But after this last spring game, he has a decision to make. Is he going to commit to the University of Florida for 2023 and enroll for that fall classes so he can get locked in for the summer, play summer ball with Billy Napier and the boys? Or is he going to stay at Moorhaven for his junior year of high school and maybe reclassify to 2024? I don't know. But well, I will say when we were there back in the spring game, there's a lot of noise. A lot of people talking about Austin Simmons being there, doing some research about apparently about dorms and whatnot and where he could stay and, and et cetera. There's a few articles that were released today talking about a lot of noise about him possibly reclassifying to 2023. So with all of this noise that has happened, I had to take a step back and say, well, we'll we have the pros and cons here and let's see if this is beneficial for us and for Austin Simmons. So of course I had to whip out the yellow notepad and start writing down the pros and cons. Thankfully, for the Florida Gators, there isn't many cons in my opinion, but the pros are huge. The first pro being, if Simmons were to commit for this 2023 class, we wouldn't have to worry about recruiting him for the next two years and keeping him locked in. We all know about how hard it is to keep these guys locked in, the possibility of them flipping, all these things which are exhausting for the coaches, for the players. That's actually a pretty good point. However, Realize DJ Lagway is committed for 2024, and he's a very good quarterback, high four-star. Some uh, have him as a five-star, and he's supposed to come in 2024. Could you lose him in the process of bringing somebody else in and putting them a year ahead? Because then he'd be behind that guy, so to speak, as far as uh, being prepared. Although they talked about DJ Lagway coming for 2023, moving up a year. But that's what happens when your quarterback situation is in this kind of dilemma. You know, a lot of us wish that we had a bunch of scholarship quarterbacks at UT. It's really hard to do that right now. Very difficult with the transfer portal. You know, we've got Joe Milton, then we got the number one player in the country and Nico, and then we got a darn good third quarterback in Gaston Moore, who's actually uh, a considered preferred walk-on, but I'm going to tell you what, he's, he's got a little bit of Stetson Bennett in him from what I saw from the spring break or from the uh, spring game. But anyway, that that's sort of the thinking. And I, I that part I understand, but again, when one domino – falls another domino could fall so it's a little bit tricky recruiting's tough i mean it just is rough to keep a part of it again i can only see this kid's recruiting and his ranking go up the longer he w would be to stay in high school currently he's a top 100 player he could skyrocket to a top 25 top 10 player if he were to stay in high school over the next two years making his value that much more making maybe like a kirby or a saban just pound it on this kid's door and put him in a tough decision so if he were to commit we avoid all of that the other massive pro is we end the 2023 recruiting class without a quarterback. With Jaden Rashada departing, going to Arizona State, we were sit there with our hands in our pants with no quarterback. And obviously, we've had a, we had a debacle earlier in the season with our backup quarterback. So we are very thin at quarterback with having two of our three main quarterbacks at Florida being transfer guys. So if we were able to get Austin Simmons in for 2023, we would fill in that void that we currently have, stacking pile those quarterbacks again, putting some value and some depth back into And that's really what this boils down to. This has to do with the Jaden Rashada disaster, and it put them behind the eight ball, so to speak, as far as quarterbacks are concerned, and they're very, very thin, and they really didn't do that great a job in the transfer portal getting a quarterback. I don't understand... Why didn't they throw some serious money at that situation? They lost two of their backup quarterbacks. One they lost. The other one who was coming in that was a four-star, he got in trouble over a rap song. And it's been kind of a train wreck down there as far as quarterbacks are concerned. And they also thought that maybe that Anthony Richardson would stay another year, but, you know, he went fourth overall. So that's what this is really about. So, you know, it's not that this is what's best for the player or it makes a ton of sense. It's that they're kind of in a desperation mode. And I know, look, I know you Vols fans don't want to hear that about Florida. You only want to hear good things about Florida. But I just thought I'd have to bring you that bad news that, they, you know, they're, they're struggling. You know, they're coming off two losing seasons. <laughs> and, uh, and they're having a tough time with their quarterback. But don't you take your eye off of them because I promise you when we show up down there, they're going to be ready. That's an important game. I've got that one circled twice. <laughs> And I just thought I'd cover a little bit of that, the hot seat for Billy and uh, reclassifying a 15-year-old sophomore. Can't make this stuff up. And by the way, I do appreciate those YouTube uh, guys and uh, uh, putting them on the show. Um, look, you know, one guy was a little bit rough about talking about it, but man, it's YouTube. It's no big deal. Don't take it personal. And uh, if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know to continue to cover the Vols and, of course, all their opponents in the SEC and anything else I can think of.
And if you've not subscribed, it's right here on your right, my left. Just boop. Just hit that little button right there. Would you listen to Shia LaBeouf, 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 whatever his name is. Shia's right there telling you what to do. Don't argue with Shia. And right over here is my most recent video. YouTube thinks you'll love it. We'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.